students we will be starting with a new chapter of your textbooks which is chapter 4 linear equations in two variables and the topics to be covered are the introduction what are linear equations solutions of linear equations graph of linear equations in two variables equation of lines parallel to the x and y axis and finally the summary which will be nothing but the overview of the entire chapter what all we've covered so I am erasing this part of the board because as you can see I have listed down certain point pointers uh, which are pertaining not just to the introduction but also to uh, other topics. So I have listed down them here. What we will do is we will take a look at this and we will uh, understand what each of the topics is covering. Okay? So let us understand the term linear equations. We have linear and equations. So let us look at the latter part which is equations. This word is derived from the term equal which means your equations will have an equal to sign. And why linear? Because graphs of such equations when you find the solutions to these equations the graph of such equations will give you a straight line on your graphs. Graphs are a straight line. So therefore line and equal to is giving you linear equations. Okay. So now let us just write down the definition of linear equations. So linear equations are algebraic equations. So algebraic, this is a topic in your algebra textbooks, therefore algebraic equations. Wherein the degree of the equation is 1. So what is degree? We have learned in chapter 2 that is polynomials, chapter 2, chapter 2, yes, chapter 2 that is polynomials that degree is nothing but highest power of the exponent in polynomial expression. Now obviously these are words, this is words, this is a definition which is going to be very difficult to remember. So let me give you examples which will help you remember what is the degree of e equation as 1. So first of all, if I have an equation x is equal to 4. Now the highest power of x is the variable and 4 is the constant. This can also be written as x minus 4 is equal to 0. So here this is a linear equation. Why? Because you have an equal to sign. So the equation part and linear because the highest power of the variable is 1. So this is an equation in one variable. Why one variable? Because you can see only one variable out here. Let me give you another example. x plus y is equal to 8. Again you have two variables but the highest degree is 1 for each. Therefore this is again a linear equation in two variables. Similarly you can have x plus y minus z is equal to 79. Just an example. Again we have three variables and the highest degree. So the degree of this equation is 1. This is a linear equation in three variables. Similarly, you can have linear equations in many variables, but in our textbooks and the top, uh, we are going to cover only until linear e equations in two variables. Linear e equation in one variable is already done in your eighth grade, so we will be concentrating on this one, where we have two variables, variable one and variable two, x and y. So, got the idea? So, let us take certain examples why linear equations are so important. Uh, let me just uh, write that down for you. Let us say if uh, 
if you are working okay if you are a worker uh, if you are a laborer and you are paid pages uh, wages per day per hour on the basis of how many hours you work so there is always a basic wage that you will be paid so let's say for 8 hours if you work for 8 hours you are paid 30 rupees I'll write rupees 30 and if you work for more than 8 hours so every extra hour that you work you, you will be paid rupees 10 so extra every extra hour you are paid rupees 10 so if you are working for 8 hours you will get rupees 30 what if you work for 9 hours 9 hours is how many hours it is 8 hours plus 1 hour so you are going to be paid rupees 30 plus 1 hour into 10 rupees which is 30 plus 1 into 10 so 30 plus 10 which is going to be 40 right if you work for 10 hours so you are working for 8 hours plus 2 hours which is rupees 30 for 8 hours and plus 2 hours into 10 rupees so which means 30 plus 2 into 10 which is 30 plus 20 which is 50 similarly for if you work for 11 hours so you you are paid 8 for 8 hours plus 3 hours which is 30 plus 3 into 10 which is 30 plus 30 which is 60 so for any n number of hours that you work x number of hours let's say if you work for x hours you are going to be paid 8 for 8 hours plus x hours hang on x minus 8 hours right this was c 11 minus 8 which is 3 10 minus 8 which is 2 9 minus 8 which is 1 so similarly x minus 8 is going to give me x minus 8 hours so this is going to be how much Eight plus x minus eight into ten. Correct. So this is an example. So which is which can be further written as eight plus ten x minus eighty, which is seventy two plus ten x. Right. So we'll leave this for now. So this is an example of. A linear, a linear equation in one variable where you are paid for per hour. Now let us take a look at another example. So let us say you are going to buy a chocolate, uh, a very simple example, okay. One chocolate is going to cost you say 5 rupees. So if you are buying uh, let us say 999 chocolates. So are you going to count 5 plus 5 plus 5 999 times? No. So 999 chocolates is going to give you 999 into 5. Right? Similarly, if you are going to buy x chocolates, the cost is going to be 5x and let us say the cost of 5x chocolates is 100 then you can find the number of chocolates how you 5 is getting multiplied with x here you divide 5 ones are 5 5 twos are so the number of chocolates that you got was 20 so do you see in your daily lives you are going to be needing variables to solve variables in order to find simple simple answers right let us take another example so the topics that we have covered so far are 
while linear equations definition examples and variables so we saw examples in single variable two variables three variables now let us take a look at live examples so why have i written live examples because we need to understand whether linear equations are applicable just in your algebraic uh, algebra books or whether in our daily lives also so let's start with taking examples in our daily lives let's say you are a laborer okay and you are paid on the basis of per uh, on the basis of hours so for every uh, there's always a basic wage that you are paid so let's say the basic wage for 8 is for 8 hours and it is rupees 30 and for every extra 1 hour so 8 hour labor wage so for 8 hours you are paid rupees 30 so this is the basic wage now for every extra hour every extra hour that is for every extra 1 hour you are paid rupees 10 so if they give you a number to uh, to find the number of hours that you worked for or they've given you the hours and you need to find how many uh, what is the wage that you're going to get let's write a formula so that we can calculate these two things right so let's say for every extra 1 hour above 8 hours how are you going to uh, how much are you going to be paid you're going to be paid rupees 30 plus 1 into 10 why because this is for every extra 1 hour so the base fare is going to be 8 because you've already worked for 8 hours and then you're being paid for 1 hour extra so this is going to be how much 30 plus 1 into 10 which is 40 similarly for every extra 2 hours you're going to be paid 30 plus 2 into 10 why 2 into 10 because 2 hours and 10 rupees per hour so you're going to be paid 30 plus 20 which is 50 similarly if you for every extra 3 hours you're going to be paid 30 plus 3 into 10 which is 30 plus 30 which is 60 similarly let's say for every extra x hours how much are you going to be paid 30 plus 10 x or x into 10 since we have written it in this format so x into 10 which is nothing but 30 plus 10x why am i writing it as 10x and not x10 because it's always the coefficient first and the variable so this is going to be equal to total wage that you're earning right so this is an expression for finding the total wage when the base uh, wage is 30 and if you have worked for x number of hours now let's say uh, you been paid 100 rupees so where do i solve this um and it is the section so let's say you been paid 100 rupees you need to find for how many extra hours you worked so you just going to substitute 100 instead of total wage so this is going to be 30 plus 10x is equal to 100 so this is 30 is going to come on my right hand side so it will become negative so this is 10x is equal to 100 minus 30 which means 10x is equal to 70 and therefore x is equal to 70 upon 10 which is 10 ones are 10 10 sevens are 70 so you have worked for extra 7 hours so you might get a question in uh, in your exam such that they won't ask you what is the extra number of hours they might just twist the question asking you what is the total number of hours that the labor worked for the laborer worked for right so you're going to this is the extra numbers of hours right so and the base number of hours was 8 so you will say total number of hours that the laborer worked for is 7 uh, 8 hours for the base hours that should be completed plus 7 hours which is equal to 15 hours 
Isn't that simple? So this was an example in your real life. We'll take a look at another example, which is uh, going to be very simple but very crucial, especially when you plan to buy things, when you want to go to the market and buy things and you're not really good at, you know, calculating uh, money. So let's say if I, uh, there's a chocolate that you need to buy. If you go to a shop and there's this new chocolate that is out in the market and it costs just rupees five. Now you eat this chocolate and you really like it and you want to distribute it on your birthday. So, and there are about 100 st uh, students in your class, 100 classmates. So you need to buy 120 chocolates at least inclusive of 20 teachers. So how much is 120 chocolates going to cost you? Will cost how much? Right? So 120 chocolates will cost you how much? 120 into 5 which is 5 zeros are 0, 5 twos are 10, 5 ones are 5, 600. But here you knew that there are 120 chocolates. What if the number is un uncertain? That is 120 is not given to you. So how are you going to calculate the cost for x number of chocolates? You will simply replace 120 by x. So it's x into 5 which is equal to 5x. Right? So 5x will give you the number of chocolates. Uh, sorry, the cost of the x number of chocolates. Right, so if I tell you that uh, the total cost, uh, if your mom uh, went to the market and you're supposed to pay her from your pocket money, if she got the chocolates for you for 100 rupees, okay? So she got the chocolates for you for 100 rupees. Now you need to calculate, now you need to find out that your mom is not cheating. So what you're going to do is, you will say 5x is equal to 100. Therefore x is equal to 100 upon 5, which is 5 ones are 5, 5 tw twos are 10, 10 and 0, so 20. So your mom should get for you 20 chocolates. If she gives you one chocolate less, that means she has eaten one chocolate on the way. Okay, so this was an example. These were two examples that I shared with you in your real life. There will be many such examples where variables are very important and linear equations and variables are going to help you just simplify so many problems in your life, especially where calculation and money is concerned. So we've completed with live examples. Now obviously we took a look at examples uh, and you know the definition and what linear equations are. So how many solutions exist for linear equations in, sing uh, in single variable? You should know this. Only one and only one solution exists for linear equations. I'll just write linear equations as LE in single variable. And these solutions can be represented on your number line. So whenever you want to uh, represent linear equations, the solutions to linear equations in single variables, you will have to plot it on a number line. So let's say, let's take an example, I have x plus 5 is equal to 10. Uh, x plus 5 is equal to 10, therefore x is equal to 10 minus 5, which is equal to 5. So you see x is equal to 5, so there's just one single solution to your linear uh, equation in one variable which can be easily plotted on your number line. So suppose let's say this is your number line. This is my center 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4 and 5 and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Okay. So your value of x is here. So you saw that linear equations have just one unique solution and they can be they have to be represented on your number line. So with this we complete this section also and how our solutions for linear equations are represented. So now since we have just revised what we have done in the 8th grade that is linear equations in single variables, let us quickly move to uh, linear equations in two variables. So what concept is applicable for linear equations in 
two variables. The same concept is applicable except for instead of one variable, you're going to have two variables. Like in linear equations, we had just one variable. It could be x, it could be y, or it could be z. So or is very important, x or y or z. So just one variable. Now in two variables, you will have expressions like this. x plus y is equal to 10. x is equal to y minus 8. Then x uh, or y minus x minus 3 is equal to 0. So or it could be y plus x plus 10 is equal to minus 8. So you see here we have two variables x y x y a y x y x. You can also take something like z x. So the variable you can take any variable but they should be only two. So linear equations in two variables are going to have just two variables. The name itself suggests it, right? Two variables. So z plus x is equal to 8, for example. Now, for linear equations in two variables, uh, since I said that the concept is the same as linear equations in one variable, the questions that we need to ask are, does the solution exist? Do solutions exist for linear equations in two variables? If yes, are they unique solutions or multiple solutions? Now, why this question is important? Because we saw that in linear equations in single variable, we just have one single solution. So we need to find whether for two variables, whether we have a single solution or multiple solution. And finally, how are these solutions going to be represented? Like linear equations in single variables are represented on a number line. Are linear equations in two variables also going to be represented on a number line or in a different format? So, uh, so we'll get to these points by looking at examples. Let's say I have, uh, there are two cricketers. Okay, so let's say we have Dhoni, Mahindra Singh Dhoni and we have, who is the other one who's really famous? Uh, we have uh, Sachin Tendulkar. Okay, and the total number of scores that they made the total number of scores they made was uh, 15 or let's say 10. I'm just taking a small number because you will see if we take a huge number then the list will go on and on. So the total number of scores that they, uh, that was, uh, that they scored was 10. So it could be that Dhoni scored 0 and Sachin scored a 10 or Dhoni scored a 1 and Sachin scored a 9. Similarly, Dhoni scored a 2 and Sachin scored an 8, then 3 and 7, then 4 and 6, then 5 and 4, then 3 and, uh, sorry, uh, 8, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 and 6. So this will become 4, 5 and 5. Then Dhoni scored a 6 and Sachin scored a 4. Then 7 and 3, 8 and 2, 9 and 1, then 10 and 0. So you see that, uh, let's say, if I say that Dhoni scored x and Sachin scored y. And therefore you get x plus y is equal to 10. Therefore you see that x could take values from 1 to 0 to 10. And y could also take uh, values from 0 to 10. Although it is going in the descending order, it's 0 to 10, right? So Sachin could have scored from 0 to 10 or Dhoni could have scored from 0 to 10. Therefore, we notice that multiple solutions exist for our linear equations in two variables. Let's take a look at another example. This was a very simple example. So we'll just take a little complicated one, yeah. So let's say you have 5 rupees coins and rupees 10 coins. And the total, uh, you, so a collection of 5 rupees and 10 rupees coin, when you count them together, the total amount that you had is 60, is rupees 60. So you need to find how many 5 rupees coin and how many 10 rupees coins you have. Let's say I have 0 10 rupees coin. So how many 5 rupee coins will I have? 60 divided by 5, which is going to be 12, right? 
if I have one ten rupee coin, so I'm left with how much? Fifty rupees because sixty minus one ten rupee would be fifty. So then you will have how many five rupee uh, coins? Fifty divided by five, which is five tens are fifty. Similarly, if you have two ten rupee coins, that means sixty minus twenty rupees is left, which is forty. So forty divided by five, five ones are five, five eights are forty. So you're left with eight five rupee coins. And then if you have three ten rupee coins, then how much money you're left with? Sixty minus thirty, which is thirty upon five. So five ones are five, five six are thirty. If you have four ten rupee coins, so how much money is? Uh, if you have four rupee coin, uh, four ten rupee coins, then it would be four into ten, which is forty. So sixty minus forty is twenty. So twenty divided by five. So five ones are five, five fours are twenty. So you will have four five rupees coin, five rupee coins. And if you have five ten rupee coins, then how much money you are left with? You are left with ten. So ten divided by two, two ones are two, two fives are ten. So you have Oh, sorry. This is by five rupee coins. So five ones are five, and five twos are ten. So you have two five rupee coins. And finally, if you have six ten rupee coins, then it would be six into ten rupees, which is sixty rupees. So obviously, now sixty rupees are done with. Therefore, the number of five rupee coins is going to be zero. Therefore, if my five rupee coins are represented by x and ten rupee coins are represented by y, then my equation will be what? Five x plus ten y is equal to Total amount. Why five x? Because x is the number of coins uh, of five rupee coins, and y is the number of ten uh, rupee coins. So, and this is the number that is five rupee coins and ten rupee coins. So, let's say if I put one here, that means there are one five rupee coins. If I put two here in place of x, then it would be two five rupee coins. Similarly, if I put a one here, it would be it would mean one a ten rupee coin. And if I put a two here, then two ten rupee coins. If I put a three here instead of y, then it would be uh, three ten rupee coins. So let us check for this value. I'll substitute x is equal to eight. That means there are eight five rupee coins. We will. Uh, by checking this and substituting total amount is 60 we should get 2 the value of y is 2 so let's just check this out so 5 into 8 i'm substituting the value of x as 8 plus 10y is equal to 60 60 i'm taking because we have taken this example already so this would be 40 is equal to oh uh, sorry 40 plus 10y is equal to 60 therefore 10y Is equal to sixty minus forty. Therefore, ten y is equal to twenty. Just continuing here. Therefore, y is equal to twenty upon ten. So these zeros cancel. Therefore, we get y is equal to two. So with this, we have verified that when the number of five rupee coins is eight, the number of ten rupee coins is two. So this was another example of a real life situation. Well, linear equations are very important. Therefore, what did we observe? That linear equations in two variables may have multiple solutions. So, solutions do exist, and there are multiple solutions. Now, how is the representation of the solutions? You will notice that. Uh, solving linear equations in two variable will always give you a straight line in your graph but this is not going to be represented on a number line but on your cartesian coordinate system we will take a look at the plotting and representing of these equations in the forthcoming classes but uh, let us quickly move on uh, for things to remember we have done examples we'll move on to things to remember for lhs and rhs lhs is nothing but left hand side and rhs is nothing but right hand side now why are we considering left hand side and right hand side because linear equations i'm just erasing this section because we saw that in linear equations we have an equal to sign so obviously uh, on either side of the equal to sign we will have some of the other variables or constants so this is going to be your left hand side and this is going to be your right hand side so two very important rules to remember if you add or subtract something to the lhs as well as to the rhs add or subtract to the rhs 
then the value of your equation does not change so if you are adding you will have to add simultaneously and if you are subtracting then you will have to subtract simultaneously for example let's say i have x plus y is equal to x plus y right if i add a 5 over here and i add a 5 over here does it make any difference again it is x plus y uh, plus 5 and x plus y plus 5 but you can't do this x plus 5 Minus five is equal to x plus y plus five. This is wrong. Why? Because here you have subtracted and here you have added. So you need to add on both the sides, or you need to subtract on both the sides, right? Now this was for addition and subtraction. Let's look for multiplication and division. So if you multiply or divide something on the LHS or, or you some number on the LHS. you will always have to multiply or divide respectively to the rhs if you are multiplying you will on the left hand side then you will have to multiply on your right hand side if you are dividing on the left hand side then you will have to divide on the right hand side you cannot uh, multiply on one side and divide on the other side so when you multiply or uh, divide on the left hand side as well as the right hand uh, right hand side with the same number then the equation remains unchanged let's take a look at an example we know that 5 is equal to 5 right 5 is always going to be equal to 5 so if i say 5 multiplied by 5 i'm multiplying with another number 5 this is also going to be equal to 5 upon 5 5 into 5 so this is 25 is equal to 25 and if you see the ratios here was 5 ones are and the ratio here was also 1 so you saw that the actual value doesn't change similarly if i have 5 is equal to 5 and i'm dividing by 5 so 5 upon 2 this is always going to be equal to 5 upon 2 because i'm dividing by the same number so c5 upon 2 is equal to 5 upon 2 but you cannot multiply on one side and divide on the other side and vice versa for example i have 5 is equal to 5 over here okay i'm saying i'm multiply by 5 over here and i'll divide by 5 over here so what do we get 25 is equal to 1 is it right no this is not equal so if you are multiplying on one side then multiply the same number on the other side if you are dividing on one side then divide with the same number on the other side don't take into account multiplication on one side and division on the other side with the same number that's going to give you a wrong output isn't it so we took a look at things to remember which is very important while solving your linear equations Now let's take a look at how uh, linear equations in two variables are represented. The general form of linear equations in two variables is ax plus by plus c is equal to zero, where a and b are not equal to zero. See, because if a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero, let's say if a is equal to zero, what equation will we have? By plus c is equal to zero, which means c is a constant, right? C is a constant. So what are we left with? By plus c is equal to zero if a is equal to zero. This makes it what? This makes it a linear equation in single variable, which is why. And similarly, if b is equal to zero, then what are we left with? A x plus c is equal to zero, right? If b is equal to zero, so what are we left with? Again, a linear equation in one variable, which is not the case. This is the importance of a and b not being equal to zero. So this is the general representation of your linear equations in two variables, which is a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero. Okay, a b. a b and c are uh, belong to the set of real numbers so this sign is belong to sign so a b c and belong to the set of real numbers sometimes you might get something like a x plus b y is equal to c so this can be written as a x plus b y i bring the c on my left hand side so this becomes minus c is equal to 0 but then you will argue that but means you told me that you know uh, it was ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 then why do i have a minus c so this answer to this is ax plus by minus c can be written as plus of minus c is equal to 0 simplify so this was the solution uh, the general representation of your 
linear equations in two variables. Now, solution of linear equations, I will just tell you uh, for right now uh, that there exists, uh, they may exist infinite solutions to your linear equations, but we will see why in the next classes because there is a whole uh, entire exercise dedicated to solutions of linear equations in two variables. So, right now you need to know that if you have linear equations in two variables, it is possible that you might have infinite solutions to it. So, with this we wind up with the introduction and few parts what was mentioned in the topics to be covered. We will take a look at the rest of the chapter in the forthcoming lectures. Thank you. Hope this video increased your knowledge. For more such videos and a completely free educational content, log on to www.epathshala.org or visit our Epathshala YouTube channel. We have each and every question solved for maths, physics, chemistry and biology. So subscribe our channel, share with your friends, like our Facebook page and follow our Twitter handle for regular updates and important educational tips and also win Epathshala goodies. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe this channel and enjoy the freedom of education.